a name and he leads them out. And when he brings them out, out his own sheep, he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. And yet uh, they will by no means follow a stranger but will flee from him for they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus is using this as an illustration, amen? amen. And uh, he said, I am the door of the sheep. What, is, what does he mean? Well, first he had to come in through a door into the earth. I'm going to change this microphone, please, because it's booming too loud. Thank you. Praise God. But he says, I am the door of the sheep, meaning I come in through the door like every other human being did, through a womb of a woman. And I come in to earth so that I can relate to the people of the earth. And I'm man, 100%, but I'm also still God. But I have to live and act, and I'm tired like men. I get tempted like men. Uh, all kinds of things that we had to go through, he went through. And he said tempted is all points, but yet not with sin. He didn't sin. Thank God. Because I'm sure that I couldn't even count the sins that I've committed if you wrote them in a book. But thank God the book is now erased. Because I repented. Amen? And he makes me righteous, not me. And so what we need to understand is that he's the door. And as Jesus calls us once he's in the earth, we go in and follow him into the is open to enter and confess Jesus and uh, so he enters in and we have a body that he can come in live and use his power through and and love us through and it's not him misuse it's a body for his holiness and his beauty and his glory and his majesty and the earth speaks a lot about beauty and majesty and the, the the fashionable and the rich and the you know I wish I could be like them that's not success Amen. and it's everywhere bombarding us sexual sexuality you know I mean everything and, you know, they've got the new law uh, that a certain president is trying to pass. Um, I've never seen a more abominable uh, human being in office as this person. He is equivalent to Sodom and Gomorrah. And I'm sure they could be watching. They could even be putting their ears in here. I don't give a squat. He doesn't give a squat about putting our little kids in places where they can take other little boys to see little girls. Amen. Amen. Come on, man. I don't care. I, you know, jail is just fine with me. I stand for God. Amen. And there, I don't know how many are going to do it in this generation. I believe a lot. I think the Lord showed me he, he wanted one too, too many steps. Because now you're dealing with little, little daughters of fathers. You don't mess with fathers and their little daughters or mothers. Next thing you know, you're going to have a revolution on hand. We can go only so far. And there has to be a line drawn, you see. And the world is mad. They're going crazy with unfocused living yes. and the straight gate is different Amen. Yes. the way that leads to destruction great it be of yes. it's easy yes. do what you want to do do your own thing Come on. well that's a lack of discipline Amen. Right. and guess what Lack of discipline destroys people. Yes. It destroys nations. Yes. It takes out all the things that mean something valuable in life. Amen. Right. Amen. And 
you know, I just have to say it. I can't, you know, I can't not say it. You, let me say something. Remember how we've been dealing with the story of the guy in John 5, uh, how the Jesus went down to the pools, uh, the porticos of um, Bethesda, the pools, five pools, and, you know, the, that's the number of grace, favor, forgiveness, mercy. Thank God. That was a living water equivalent of a vernacular that when you stepped in, you received a, a miracle. Not deserved. These people didn't deserve it. We don't deserve it. But yet we get it. Why? Because we chose to walk towards God. Is it because we're perfect? No. We fail and fall short in many ways, Jesus said. Get back up and keep on going. Oh, so you missed it. Praise God forever. So you failed. Like I said, failure is only a act of what happened yesterday. It's not a person. God doesn't make no junk and he makes no failures. So if an action failed, get rid of it. Just forget it. Jesus did. So don't come reminding him of it, you know. He's like, what are you talking about? That's how good he is. Some people say, well, I have the right to do what I want. Well, that's right. You do. You have the right. And I'm not going to tell you what to do. But I have the right to do what I want. And this is what I'm going to do. And this is what I've been doing for 30 years now. And it's worked for me. And it's powerful. And it changes my life. And it brings me to a place that I never thought I could go. Yes. Come to the Lord a total waste product of the rock and roll world. It used to have rings and money and, and jewels and, and clothes galore and records. I, my record collection was so rare that it was worth $20,000. I collected rarities. I threw them all out. I threw my rings out. I took my leathers and threw them out. And I said, now all I got is one shirt and one pair of pants and a pair of shoes. But this is me. You got very little to work with, but the Lord said, no, that's what I need. I'll make you blessed. I'll make you rich. I'll make you prosperous. I'll make you anointed. I'll make you powerful. I'll make you a life changer and a world changer. And I didn't get that by sitting on my duff doing nothing. And going and doing everything that I liked to do and that I used to do. There was no uh, no progress in it. Amen. And so we we want a fruitful life. John says, you come in to the kingdom of heaven, and then when you begin to know his voice, he says you follow him. Yeah, yeah. And what it means is that you know how to hear what he's leading you to do. And as you and if you let that gentle, sweet voice of the Holy Spirit kind, loving kindness, and you start to follow that sweet voice of the Holy Spirit. It's not always loud and brash. The Holy Ghost is quiet a lot of times, and, and in those secret places when you're in worship and you're just wanting more of Him. You know, the Bible says those that wait on the Lord shall know their God. How do you know God? By waiting on Him. You give place to him when you wait on him, and he begins to speak to you in the secret place of your heart, in the inner chamber, and begins to fellowship with you in that special way that only God can show affection like that. Only God can comfort us like that. Only God can forgive us like that. Only God can show compassion like that. And the loving kindness will lead you to repent. Amen. Amen. 
Romans 4, 6, 4 through 6. And so when we're focusing on living, we want fruit. Amen. Look over here. Jump over a couple chapters to the 15th chapter of, of John. Still there in Johnny? Apostle John. What a man of God. They couldn't kill that guy. <laughs> Sent him over to Patmos and tried to boil him in oil and he just sat there. Put him on his stumps. Just couldn't do it. Jesus had other plans. You know, uh, the, the devil cannot kill you if God's chosen you and doesn't want you to die. He has to get permission from the Almighty. And the Almighty has you in the palm of his hand. Yes. And there have been many times when we would have been lost, but the Almighty grasped you yes. and his angels. And he said, get out of here now. <clears throat> and he put your enemies out. Yes. And he said, I want to give this tree more time. Yeah. Like he just said, can I trim this tree and let it grow more? And he said, I want to give this tree more time. There comes a time when he stops, though, because he said, let me get another, I don't know, a couple years out of it. But I don't think anybody's near that in here. I don't think we're looking for that. I'm looking to get closer to Jesus. How about you? I'm not looking for a way out. I'm looking for a way in. <laughs> but so in verse, uh, well, let me just finish this. In verse 10, it talks about the fact that you know, in John 10, 10, you're in 15, I know, but it, it, you know, it says that I come to bring you life and bring that life more abundantly. And as we begin to focus on Jesus, his word, worshiping him, being close to him, um, that life is not just more abundantly, it increases until it says it gushes over like a mighty river. I mean, that's too much. God wants you to have a too much life. Amen. Amen. And so, so John, uh, in John 10.10, 10, it talks about, you know, focused life. Amen. Um, you know, unfocused life, it says Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's the unfocused life. And that unfocused life is a confusing, uh, frustrating uh, life, you know, it's a kind of life where here's a here's a natural vernacular. You just have a day where, like, you bend down, you drop something, you bend down. I, I don't know if you've ever had this. I've had it too many times. I'll bend down, pick something up, and then bam, I'll hit my head on a cabinet. You know, you ever had that happen to you? Yeah, and then I'm walking out of the room and totally stub my toe. I mean, all in the same like five minutes. And I'm like, oh, my toesies, Sister Rosies. And, you know, then it seems like you're bumping into stuff. I mean, like, I had, one day I had that happen to me. <clears throat> and then next thing you know, I'm like closing the bathroom door, but my head was in the way before I got it closed. And I went, bam. <laughs> I'm like, ah, mommy, that's not my day. You know, lots of stuff like that. And finally, this is what I usually do. I go, devil, I bind you. I know that sounds crazy, but I said, no. He against And so get out of here. And, but sometimes we're like that spiritually. So we're running into stuff, you know. It's like walking at night. When you're trying to, you know, go find the bathroom and bam, you know, stub your toe. And, uh, or you're trying to find the refrigerator because you haven't broke the habit yet, which I gotta, I gotta break that habit. I still get up sometimes and slobber out. But I'm trying to work out more. And I'm trying not to eat as much during the day. So. But that's still got to be broke. There's no excuse. So, you know, 
we need to recognize spiritually sometimes we're going to stub our toe and that's going to hurt but you know um we're going to lead a fruitful life if we just keep on asking the lord to work with us and in john 15 it says here in uh talks about it in verse uh uh, five. It says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, say abides in him. Abides. Say continually Continue. abides in him. Abide. Or united to him, being united. Amen. Yes. You don't break your fellowship, in other words, with the Lord. It's a continual yes. thing. Yes. And then so uh, you bear much fruit, but apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, uh, it talks about how and goes its own way. Uh, they won't bear any fruit. Amen. <laughs> so we need to stay hooked up and hooked in and locked in to Jesus and what he's doing for our life. And there are a lot of people, listen carefully, you're not going to be held responsible for what you did on earth. Yep. Pastor Steve, doesn't that sound wrong? No, you're going to be held responsible for what you should have done. Well, Lord, I was too busy. I didn't have the time. I remember I put this. To do. When I felt biting on my butt to get over to Africa and us to buy in a tent for fifty or for twenty five thousand people. You know, I, I hooked I hooked up and Pastor Sherry did and we got that fifty thousand bucks out of the bank, which was the, all we had, and put it into that thing and they've finished building it and we went over and we saw now over two hundred thousand people have come to Christ. Now, I got attacked for several years after that. Several years. The devil tried to take me out. But it was too late. Me and Ken and a, a bunch of other preachers already had accomplished something that Satan could never f stop and never fix or change. And as a matter of fact, these churches now are spreading out to other churches and other there's uncountable amounts of people that have been saved Amen. and other amount uh, uh, ministers that have been turned out there was over 25 almost immediately that were turned into pastors <laughs> and then I just obeyed but, but what I'm saying is, if I had missed that harvest, God would have said to me, I, I told you to do that, and you didn't do it. I called you to do it. And I wouldn't want to see those souls' blood on my hands. Lester Summerall had a vision once. How many of you heard of Lester Summerall? Great man of God. He's now going to be with us. And he was a great preacher. He was a young man. He was working with people like Smith Wigglesworth and, and uh, dealing with uh, other great evangelists. Um, Howard Carter was a great man of God, uh, one of the greatest on teaching on spiritual gifts. And uh, so powerful, Howard Carter, that he said, come join me when I go overseas. And uh, he said, I'll be in this nation. And then uh, Lester Summerall couldn't get to him when he was writing that he was coming over. And uh, so, but Howard Carter said, I'll be in this area, you know, near. When Lester Summerall arrived in that place and walked into the town, uh, there was a car there. Now, no communication between them. And this is like months later. And Howard Carter's uh, had told him, now go out, go down and pick up uh, my God servant, Lester Summerall. He'll be in that village just walking in. And so they got the car down there, they got out and they go, Lester Summerall. And he goes, that's me. And uh, they said, um, 
come on with us, we'll take you to uh, Reverend Carter. And they said, he said, what? He said, oh yeah, he sent us here. He said he knew you were coming weeks in advance and he knew right where you'd be. <laughs> we could do that. But I'm getting distracted here. See, I'm getting off focus. <laughs> but the thing is, is we need to keep our focus on the mission from God. We have a mission. Say, I'm, a, I'm on a mission to God. Starting the blues, brothers. Oh. Starting the joy, brothers. But we might uh, be focused right now on the right thing. I want to talk about that. But you got to keep a continual fellowship with God in order to stay focused. You remember the prodigal son. We had talked about 30 and the Lord had to go in there by the Spirit of God. And there was a bunch of people there, but he only went to one man. Because the Lord showed him this man, is to, he's pure. He desires it, and he believes that he can be delivered from this uh, crippledness. And he had a dream about being free, and he didn't let go of the dream. Don't let go of your dreams, my friends. Don't let the devil steal your dreams. Amen. Write them down, look at them, and declare them over yourself daily. And so he, he comes up to the guy, and he says, Arise, take up your mat and walk. And then the anointing hits him, and then he gets up on, on his mat and walks away. Leading, uh, leaving to glorify God. But this is where a lot of people are missing it. Jesus comes and says, I'm calling you to do this. And then he comes back later and says, I'm calling you to do this. I'm calling you to do this. Now, I'm not saying you should run whole hog while half ready into what he calls you to do. But the first thing that I always do is, what do you want me to do to make the first step? And he may tell me what to do, and then I just arise, get up, and start walking. And start doing a few things. And next thing you know, the Lord's showing me this or showing me that, and, and I'm growing in what he called me to do. Whether it be a job, whether it be business, whether it be, you know, preaching or ministry. We need to understand that we're going to be held accountable. So you might be focused, but you gotta, we've got to be careful to keep the perspective right on, on the Lord. Amen? Amen? On the God kind of blessed life and the right perspective. Um, David had the right perspective on the Lord many times. He lost it a few times. But look over here to Psalm 26 with me. You getting something? Yes, yeah. Psalm 26, let's go to verse 1. It says uh, here, David talking, Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in integrity. That's one way you can always make sure that you're doing right before God is walk in integrity. It means don't be dishonest with people because it keeps your heart pure. And when your heart's pure, God can speak to you. And he said, Vindicate me, Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have also trusted in the Lord, and I shall not slip. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my mind and my heart, for your loving kindness is before my eyes. And I have walked in your truth, and I have not sat with idolatrous mortals. Let me break that down. David says, Vindicate me, Lord, for I have walked in integrity. Um... In other words, he's saying, I'm walking in the purity of my heart. Everything that I know that you told me to do, I'm doing it. If we walk in the light as he's in the light, then we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Amen? And so he's saying, I'm walking in the light. 
You know, the entrances of his word giveth light. So he's reading the word. He's, he's staying. His word is like the light of dawn that shines more and more under the perfect day. You're getting closer to God as you meditate and study in his word. His, light, his word is a lamp unto our feet and light unto our path. We want to find the right path. Keep the word in front of you on the path. Amen. Decree a thing and it shall be established and light shall shine on your path. When we speak the vision, then all of a sudden we get revelation of where to go. And it, it shines on our path and we know which way to step and which way to go. Amen. And so he says, vindicate me for I have walked in my and I will trust it in you and I will not slip. Look at that. He's saying, I'm walking in purity, Lord. To the best of my knowledge, I'm walking in humility before you. I'm not lifting myself up, my name or my, my uh, so-called kingship. And um, David made a choice Amen. there. Yes. We have a choice. We can walk and be honest with people or we can be deceptive. <laughs> David said, I'm not going to be that way. I'm going to let the Lord be pleased with me. Amen. I'm not going to hide anything. I'm bringing all my cards out on the table and laying them out in front of the Lord and saying, this may be the joker is in here and you need to get that out. <laughs> and, and so the Lord's saying here, uh, examine me. That's when the Lord needs to get out of my life. No, I don't think so. Lord, prove me. Say, prove me. Prove me. Say, Lord, Lord, examine me. Prove me. Try my mind and my heart. For your loving kindness is before my eyes. And I have walked in truth. So what's he saying? David's constantly, consistently giving God permission to prove him. He's got an open heart. He's saying, direct me, correct me, protect me. I'm opening my heart to you. Do what I, that you want to do with my heart. It says in Psalm 139 that, um, that the, the Holy Spirit searches my heart. And if there's any unclean way in me, Lord, remove it far from me. And so this is heart stuff. This is deeper than just outside the flesh here. And he says, you know, I'm opening myself to you. And he said, and prove me. Uh, in other words, prove my life out. Prove it out. Am I doing what you want me to do? And the Lord says, and as a result, he said, I'm going to strengthen you. I'm going to adjust you. And I'm going to meet your needs. Because when you trust in the Lord with your heart and acknowledge him all your ways, he shall lead you in his path of righteousness. Amen. And then he says here in verse four and a half, nor will I go in with hypocrites. I've hated the assembly of evildoers. I will not sit with wicked people. I will wash my hands in innocence and I will go about your altar, O Lord, that I may proclaim with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of your wondrous works. Lord, I, I, I have habitation of your house in the place where your glory dwells. So he's saying these are some things, other things he does he says, I'm not going to hang around with wicked people. Amen. Not going to fellowship with them. Amen. Amen. That's a choice. Amen. The Lord says, when, you know, the wicked people in Psalm 1, they'll ask you to go in with them and create violence and steal and, and do evil. And, um, but if you won't have any wicked way with them, then you're going to be blessed and and it, then it talks about later that if you go in with wicked people, that it talks about the fact that the Lord will laugh at you in your time of calamity. You're praying and saying, Lord, I'm at the end of my rope now. You've got to help me. And the Lord said, I can't hear you. You never humbled yourself before me. Now I can't hear you. I know this is a little bit stronger message than I'm normally preaching, but guess what? Sometimes... Correction is really good for us, <laughs> especially in this world, because we get way off, you know, sometimes, 
you know, I'm not speaking that over us, but you know, you just give a little time off to the the things of the devil and stuff and just start wandering and before you know it, this world is so full of corruption, you're like, how'd I get here? Right. Amen. Amen. And then you gotta fight all the way back. So the Lord is saying, you know, David's saying, I'm not gonna hang around these evil people, the, the judges, the compromisers, they say one thing and do another, and um, they lie and they're wicked, and they sit together and, and criticize. He says, I wash my hands of them. Amen. Amen. Those are all choices. David was a smart man. He was the most anointed king in the history of the Bible. I don't give a squat whether they say Solomon was the wisest man in the world. David was the king that had God's heart in everything. Yeah. And the Lord said, and he's the one I'll call my lineage to, not Solomon. And Jesus was birthed through his uh, lineage on the physical realm. And also Jesus loved him spiritually, and so did the Father God. And they made sure everybody knew about it. They bragged down. And I believe when you get to heaven, David's going to be a major, probably the king under the king of kings because of the way he was. And so, Lord, I'd love you, the habitation in your house and the place where your glory dwells. He said, I'm, here's where I'm going to be. I'm going to be at your altar. I want to be where you are. And I want my spirit to be the temple of God. And then he said over in, you know, the 27th chapter, he said, My heart said, to, verse 8, My heart said to you, Lord, your face, Lord, I will see. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant into anger. But be my help and do not leave me or forsake me. I just want to close with a couple stories here. But what I want to say is that... Um, you know, the Lord is our source. Yes. Amen. And when we start getting all focused on our job, our, you know, benefits, promotions, although we should believe God for those things and being real rich and, and all that, you know, that's not bad. It's not bad. God's not opposed to people being rich. He's opposed to people being covetous. Because he says in, in 1 Timothy 6, later on he says, charge those that are rich in the world to uh, be good stewards of their money. In other words, he has money ministries. He raises up and he said, be careful what you do with it. Give money to the right causes. And so, but anyway, I'm thinking about this, about a couple guys that got off focus. We, I had a disciple in the Lord that I mentored from babyhood basically kind of led him to the Lord almost and, and uh, he, he grew up and got kind of mature to a degree in the Lord he was like six years and been mentoring him and he slipped a little bit and go this way or that way but I helped him he came from a bad drug past like me and um, anyway so I had to move away when we came over here but I came, I stayed in touch with him some his name was John John Champion, and um, he was a good man, he had a tender heart, but he fell away from the Lord, and, and he talked about the Lord at his job somewhat to people, he never quit kind of witnessing, but he just got off, and year after year went by, and it was like, you know, eight years, nine years, and he just never went back to the Lord, never went back to church, and you know, just kind of did his own thing. And all of a sudden, I get a phone call, um, Pastor Steve, from his wife, and crying hysterically. Can you come and do John's funeral? Because he just got in a car accident, and um, some lady pulled out of an intersection when he was driving through it and hit him on his side of the car, and he died instantly. And um, I said, sure, I can I'd do that. And it was touching, and 
you know, I've had to do this too many times, very sons in the Lord. You know, if you're around as long as I am and you see what happens to people that go in the wrong direction, you would really take notice. And so I did his funeral and I said, Lord, what happened? You know, and he said, John got far enough away from me that if, if something didn't happen, he would end up in hell. And he said, I had to take my hands off and, and not protect him anymore. And the devil came in and killed him because I turned his flesh over to the devil that he made, his soul made me saved. And he said, of course, God didn't cause the death. John caused the death by choices. And, and they'll sow you sow and you reap, you know? I can go on for too long. I just buried one of my sons in the Lord recently. He was only 32 years old, slipped away from Jesus, got into business and became more obsessed with his business to the place where he kind of possibly could have started lifting out of the funds. Now, there's no proof of that. But there was big time guilt on him. He went, was in prison, came out of prison, he was very quiet when he got finally home to his parents, and two weeks later, he blew his brains out. We see, Pastor Sherry and I have seen this a lot, and there's a time when I, we've seen people turn against us, and I'm not doing this to scare anybody here, but there's been at least three occasions where us very deep way. They should never touch the anointed. And uh, we had to bury them too. Three of them over the years. Never held anything against them. Loved them. Just sad. But um, we got to be careful. That's all I'm saying. You know, you're so precious to God. He wants you to succeed in everything you do. He loves you so much. And he's given you such precious gifts. And he's not going to beat on you or force you to do anything, you know. He'll gently work with you. But we have to make a step in the right direction, amen. The four lepers... They were going to starve to death and die. And so they decided to walk over to this village, this is the Old Testament, and thought, well, we can walk there and they'll kill us. But at least we might be able to get some food because everybody was starving in Israel. Well, when they walked over, it turned out that their God magnified their footsteps. And they were so loud that every person in that tribe and people ran away and left everything there. To their town. Within one day, that town went from poverty to being totally wealthy and rich and prosperous and had more than everything they needed. Just right decisions. They were four lepers. They were like night of the living dead people, you know? If God can do that with them, just by them stepping in a direction, what can you do with us? Amen. Amen. Okay. I don't usually do this. You could see the look on his face like, what's she doing? You know, I think that... Um, a lot of us are blessed, right? We're yes. blessed. Yes. I'm doing great. My life is wonderful. And uh, I'm living this message. You know, what's the word of God? I mean, we didn't come here to play church, right? I just talked to some people that were going out because they thought, what in the world are we doing in praise and worship? And I gave them about 15 verses. And uh, they still walked out because it's just a little too loud. 
And I walked in thinking, praise God, I've got I'm glad I have a church that the Holy Spirit can move and have his way. I didn't come over here to play tiddlywinks. I came over here to pioneer something. And we're doing it. Amen? And some will go and some will stay. Some will go and live the way they want to live and some will get planted and they'll be all that God wants them to be. He's talking about focused living. I'm focusing. Are you focusing? We're doing good. We're blessed. I would say 98% of us don't need that message on clean living. But how many of us in this room know someone that does? And that's really where my heart is today. We are doing good, but what about your brother? What about your sister? You know, we got to go after these people. If we don't, they're going to go to hell. That's where the rubber is really meeting the road. Amen? I just ran into an acquaintance that we bought our Jeep from, and I found out the guy died. I loved this salesman. We loved him. And uh, it's all that I can do to not cry right now because I, I missed it. And I wished that I could have reached out to him more. And I went and inquired of him, and he was divorced, and, and, and he was alone, and I'm hoping that he knew the Lord. Now, we did witness to him to the degree that we needed to, but I'm, I'm looking inside, and I, I have to go pray. I have to say, Lord, forgive me, because I was a light, and, and, and I hope I didn't drop the ball, and the guy's in hell today. And we will stand account of not what we are what we what we did in the world, but we were what we were called to do. Amen. And so I'm going to give it back to you. No, I'm not. Do you want me to make the altar call? Praise the Lord. Well, if we need to be clean, we're clean. Amen. Ask the Lord to forgive us. Right. The day is. What are we doing with our brother and our sister? Where's the one that we're to be uh, pulling with us? Right? Aren't we to run together? Are we all by ourselves in this world? I got mine. I got my family. I'm blessed, man. I'm blessed. I am blessed. I'm blessed as blessed can be. But what about all the others that aren't out there that are really struggling and they're really depressed? And I know them and I need to reach out to them because if I don't reach out to them, they may not come back in the Lord. I don't care where they go to church, just get in God's perfect will. Amen? I think there's somebody that you feel like you're supposed to be a, a, a discipling. Can we do that today? Can we do his heart? You know, when Jesse Duplantis had a vision of the Lord, he saw Jesus preach, and he says, I'm going for your mothers and your brothers and your sisters. He's still the evangelist. What did the Lord say to you about the evangelist? He said last night when I was praying, he said, where are the evangelists in America? They've disappeared uh, and off the face of America, and we need evangelists. We need to pray for evangelists. Because our country is dying without salvation. We're all evangelists. That's right, brother. We're all evangelists. And I'm telling you, there's a ministry of evangelism. And those of us that have the ministry of evangelism, we need to get moving. Because I'm called to pastor. I can go out and evangelize, but who's going to minister to the sheep when they come in and their babies? Who's going to change their diaper? So we all need to rise up and we need to evangelize every person that the Lord is drawing us. Because that talk to, to say, your blood is on my hands. Yes, this is a heavy message, but you know what? We're big kids. Huh? Yeah, we're, we're big kids, amen? amen? And we can do this, praise the Lord. Amen. And so instead of, okay, Lord, please forgive me. Let's just say it, Lord. If I need to make anything right, I just get it right right now. Amen? If, if there's any... But now, let's just grab hands by the person beside of us, and let's pray for those that the Lord is telling us that's missing, that's not doing good. They have a, you know, they have a, a wayward walk with God. They don't, they're aside. They may be cast into the fire and burned. I care about those, and I know you do. Amen? Can we do that? Praise God for those that are standing up. Amen? 
Who is the person that you're thinking about right now? Let's stand. Come on, let's stand and do that. Amen? Who's the person that you're thinking of right now that if you don't help them, they may never get help? They may go to hell. Let's, let's just lift them up right now. Amen? I'm going to give you a second to think about anybody that you could be an influence on. We are called to make a difference. Amen? Father, we have people that are on our heart today. Thank God you were the evangelist. Thank God you're the pastor. And Lord, we thank you that we are your body now. If there's anything that's going to get done, we're your hands and we're your feet and we're your eyes and we're your heart. And we will go out and reach this lost and dying world. And Lord, we, we lift those individuals up to you right now. Father, we pray that you would spare them, draw them to you. We bind the blinders on their eyes. You lie in spirit of hell that would try to deceive them and go into the way that's bigger and leads that's broad. And, and, and leads to destruction. We cross that right now. We put a no trespassing sign. We put a barrier in the spirit right now. And it'll be like a bumper car. Every time they try to ram through there, they're going to be derailed and go back to the drawing of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we love them and we won't let them go to hell because we care about them. And we lift them up to you right now. And Lord, we give them to you. We can't die for them, but you have already done it. And we thank you that you're drawing them, drawn to yourself, drawn to yourself, working them like you did us. Boy, were you ever patient with us. We can be patient with them. Boy, we were thick-headed, but you moved anyway. <laughs> and so, Father, we thank you. We love them. We won't let them go. We thank you Christ is being formed in them. And we ask for labors to be loosed into their path. And we may be one of them and we'll go. We'll say, we'll do whatever you want us to do. Because we love them, Lord. We love them. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for the blessings of God on our life. But we don't want to be, we're blessed, we're warm, we're filled. And go somewhere else and you go feed them. Somebody else go feed them. No, we want to bless them. We want to feed them. We want to love them. We want to draw them in. We want to be your voice, Father God. We care about these people. Ora makata. Let's just pray in the spirit a minute. La maria na koto ra makana. La da ma ra ma la maka. Oh la nela mo la ma la ro na ra bakata. Oh re viti shavun zinje na mango mo ra bokota la maka. Ah la ntara de ro re viri ando ri re viri atai. Oh, thank you, Father. Lead us in what to say. Lead us in how to minister to them. How to love on them. And we thank you, Lord, that you can trust us because you put the I'm going to apologize for coming up here because the Lord says it's like a prophetic. Amen? And so high five somebody. Tell them you love them. Praise the Lord. Glad we got our church family. Amen? We're stronger together. Amen? Tonight, 7, 7.30, 6.30, we got Pastor James ministering, amen? And Youth of Flame will be having a painting party. So those of you that are in the youth group, woo, come on out and bring some painting clothes or wear them. Have a great day.